Hi everyone, joining me tonight is Amy Crossing. Say hello, Amy. Hi everyone. <laughs> yeah, this is, um, um, well the story I'm doing tonight is about if ever you've believed in someone, you know, like if there's someone there that you, that's working for you and you totally believe in that person or, you know, you know they've had a bit of a rough time or whatever, why not go and do something really nice for them, you know, just to say thank you. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be known for doing it. Just do something, a nice little something for them. Anyway, and you'll feel like doing it after you hear this story, I'm sure. So, um, tonight, Amy's going to tell us her little story about, well, I'm going to ask the questions <laughs> and you're going to answer. Sure. And, um, all right, so let's go back to you being a single mum. Yep. With two children. Mm -hmm. And married for how long? I oh, was married for a few years and the marriage didn't work out. Um, I repartnered not too long after, but that was a very toxic relationship. And after several years that ended as well, and I found myself moving back in with mum and dad. Oh, so moving back in with mum and dad? Yeah, with two, two children. children. How old were your children? Um, they were it's tall, maybe 10 and 8. 10 and 8, time, right. Yeah. Um, uh, we stayed there for a little bit and got back on my feet. I've always maintained full-time work, so um, and we've moved into this little house. We've been here for a couple of years now, so we're really So close. this is the house we're at now? Yeah, so, okay. yeah, so I found, found this little house mm -hmm. and someone was gracious enough to give us a, a shot. So we were able to start and rebuild again. Okay, so let's go back to, you know, like difficult times. Yep. Like obviously being a single mum. Is difficult enough. Totally difficult yeah. enough. And I guess too, um, you know, a lot of the problem is too trying to make ends meet constantly, isn't it? Like, you know, just to keep food on the table and the bills paid yeah. without doing anything spectacular, you yeah. know, without going and having your hair done every week or your nails done. Yeah. So um, that in itself is a challenge for any single parent out there. And, you know, I take my hat off to you because... It is a really, really hard job to make ends meet. Yeah, it is. So, um, the two children were with you and you've moved into this house. Yep. And you were working then for yep. an organisation? Yeah, I was working for um, a small to medium large company. Um, Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. Um, great work life, but because of my toxic relationship, I found myself behind in a lot of my you know, commit financial commitments. So what do you mean by, okay, you were... So I defaulted on loans, you know, had unpaid utility bills and things like that. Um, had direct debit set up and everything like that, but, you know, feeding two almost preteen children is expensive and I would move into a house, so there was moving costs and all that, and I just, I always was running in the red, like I would... Did let he contribute to you financially, like your, your partner when you were together? My, yeah, look, um, he was uh, in and out of work and things like that. So um, we'd made some poor life choices and things like that. Um, but I take ownership on it. Like, it, it, I, I'm an adult and I can make my own choices. And I needed to provide for my family. And I'd let those direct debits go, in, like go into an overdraft. And I was just always, like, I'd work five, really hard five days a week and just seemed like I was never getting anywhere. I felt like that little mouse on the wheel going around and around and around and it just it became too much at one point where I got really, really dark and like depressed and had those suicidal thoughts. Because All right, so let's go back there. Yeah. Because, you know, this is real. This is real stuff and this is what my show's all about. It's about, you know, giving people opportunity to tell their stories in the hope that someone out there will listen and maybe it'll assist you or guide you to make better choices or it just might um, help you in a way that, you know, if you are thinking that life's too hard and too tough and you want to step out and you want to be here no longer, um, perhaps watching some of these stories and listening to how people cope, how other people cope, that it may in fact help you out. So, alright, so let's go back to Amy and 
you're in a really dark place because you know the finances and that are getting really bad. And I was doing it all on my own, and I didn't see like for a long time you put your head in the sand, do the emu thing, and you know if I just don't address it and I don't acknowledge it, then it'll go away and it'll all be okay. And the reality is, once you pull that head out of the sand, it's still all there, and you know it's probably worse than what it was initially when you went oh retreat I'm not going to deal with it because I can't and um, I didn't want to do that anymore I wanted to build for my children and my future so how long like that period how long did that go on for that the financial thing before um, you came to that stage where you just didn't even want to be here anymore um, it kind of quickly, rapidly, ha like it, I suppose it happened over, you know, a course of a few years and, you know, the toxic relationship and, you know, the, um, the, the emu in the head, like, so yeah. all the elements Just coming together. Just everything compounded yeah. and, um, I found myself alone in a house with two children and at one point there I struggled to buy sanitary items for myself, um, you know, um, I chose, chose certain things to, to do in my life and I'm not proud of them but it just it all just compounded when we got here and I was all alone like I'd gone from a toxic relationship and I went back to my family home for love support and all of that and then you know I needed to get out on my own because my kids needed their own space my parents needed their own space I needed my own space and it just kind of got a bit too much and like I was working so hard and I had nothing at the end of it like the, the, your pay packet would come in and as soon as it comes in it's gone again and you're in debit and it's just like how long can I sustain this kind of behaviour until something gives and that something was me like I neglected myself and you know choosing not to address those small little issues had compounded and became so huge that I didn't want to address them I didn't want to be here although I love my children and my anger it was just too much. It was too much on my own. And I sat outside one day and was like, right, that's it. I don't want to be here anymore. So did you did you get help? Did you talk to anyone about it prior to uh, your boss? Like I've, had, I've had my friends and they've all been aware and they've been an ample amount of support. And, you know, I've seen my GP and, you know, I suffer from anxiety and obviously depression. So, you know, I've had um, medical assistance and medication for that. I probably I, I haven't chosen to do therapy because I there's boxes that I'm not ready for myself to open up. I expose my friends and my and my therapy, my sounding board, and they listen. But then they I go home and I'm on my own again, and the kids go to sleep, and you're on your own again, and you. So what's one of the things, things that you? What's one of the things that you do for yourself? Um, like when you're in that situation, when you think you can't cope, what was one of the things that you would do to, you know, maybe get you through to the next day? Um, go outside and have a cigarette and look at the moon and the stars and... Well, that's not so healthy for you, <laughs> No. Let me tell you, looking at the moon and the stars is okay. <laughs> you know, I'd go and check in on my children and realise that, you know, as much as it's shit right now, they need me as much as I need them, so just, I think... A lot just, of self-talk. Yeah, like, I think we, as humans and women, we try, we do that self-doubt and, you know, um, we can be our worst own enemy at some point in time, but I had to just keep reminding myself that, you know, you've been through worse, it'll get better, and like, that, just that hope of tomorrow, do you know what I mean? Like, you just mm. gotta, you just gotta try to, to... So that worked that, for you to just kind of keep it, it was a that? It was a band-aid, yeah. it was a band-aid, um... You know, it all came to a head, and I was, I was like, I don't know what to do anymore. And I got to that point where, I, like I said, I didn't want to do it anymore, as much as I love the kids, and, you know. So did you go to the doctor and speak to the doctor about it? I had a meltdown at work the mm -hmm. next day after I had those thoughts, and I got my my manager at the time, my, my floor manager, um, sent me home, and I rang my best friend, and I said, I need you to meet me at the doctor's. I rang my cousin, who's like amazing, like she's like my mother, and I asked her to talk to me the whole way I was coming home because if I was going to go, I was going to go and I was going to drive myself into a tree. And so you planned that? You, that's yeah, what you planned. yeah, I'd sat down the night before and worked it all out, and I was just, I need you to talk to me, I need you to. Did you, you know, tell anybody that, that you'd done that? Like, had you. I told my cousin when I spoke to her, 
Yeah, um, that's what your thoughts yeah, were. Yeah, and I just said, like, you need to talk to me because I need to get to the doctors and I need to get help. My friend's going to be there waiting for me. And she just talked to me. The 45 minute drive home, she talked to me, she listened to me cry. Sorry, I don't mean to cry. <laughs> that's really like, um, you know, Oh, it's okay. terrible. I don't... Oh, I'm just emotional. It's this time of year. It's stupid. I can normally talk about it without crying. It's not terrible. <laughs> it's quite natural. And yeah. I mean, you know, it is a very natural thing for everyone. You know, like anyone should be able to cry and you shouldn't feel bad about crying. You know, you've got to yeah. release all that energy yeah. out. And, you know, it's a good thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I... um, My cousin drove, drove home with me on loudspeaker and... My best friend was waiting there and we got straight in because I'd rang the doctor and said, this is what's happening. And they're, they're like, can't get right in right away because I'd obviously spoken to them in previous years for this sort of scenario. And So you'd had thoughts yeah. like this previously? No, I'd, I'd just been really down yeah. and anxiety and stress and all of that sort of stuff. So I I had that in, like, I've had... I've had it's, it's kind of it, you don't start from being this happy person mm. to all of a sudden I'm dead inside I don't want to mm. be here it's a domino effect of so many other things and it's so different for everybody else mm. and, you know for what for what it was for me you know it's going to be different to the next person but I guess it's just a matter of you know recognizing those tiny little things that like those those self doubting words that you you know you talk that that negative talk that you give yourself and, you know, um, it just kind of compounds. So it's not some one day you just wake up and go, oh, I don't want to be here anymore. Like mm. I've gone from this happy-go-lucky person. Like if anyone had met me during that stage, they would not think that, you know, I, I, I'm i not confident that I have anxiety, that I suffer from, you know, you know, mild depression and things like that because on the outside, you put on a show and you're the loud... I'm, I'm always come across as a loud, confident person. I'm not. Inside, there's a little girl, like, sitting in the corner rocking because what if they don't like me? Or what if I said the wrong thing? What if I upset somebody? You know, they're the things that you're saying. Like, right now, I'm sitting here going, oh, what if I'm making a fool of myself? Do you know what I mean? And I'm not, but... You're not. But it's, it's that self-talk mm. and that self-putting down. And it's just a matter of recognising, you know those little triggers and going, I'm not okay. So do you, are you, um, do you, are you, are you, okay. Do you, uh, <laughs> there's so many things I want to ask you. Um, so when you get to that stage, do you, have you got something that you follow now? Like if you were talking to yourself about that situation, would you have a step one that you take and a step two that you take? Or like how do you know when to actually get help? What's, what's the thing for you that you know to go and talk to someone or to get help? Um, I guess I, I go, go within, like, um, I've learned, I've, like, done, like, some, like, meditation and things like that, you know, mindfulness is a really great thing, like, instead of, like, sitting there thinking about, like, all the things that are going wrong in my life and, oh, I could have done that better, you know, I do this little self-affirmations, like, you know, but what am I grateful for today? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what made me happy today? What have I done that made me feel good today? You know, just those little things and, you know, it just like kind of snaps you out. Like, well, don't be ridiculous, Amy, you know. That's going to, it's going to be okay because look at all of the other things that's going on. So, but it, it takes, it takes a long time to figure out those tiny little things that work for you. And like I said, what works for some person doesn't work for mm. the other. I guess it's just, I but recognising it self, as step one. Yeah, self-awareness, I think. Mm. Like, for me, I know that this time of the year is really difficult for me because I'm still single, everybody. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, I have two now teenage children and um, my son doesn't live here anymore. He's chosen to go with his dad because he's, you know, a teenage boy. He needs his mm. dad. Um, it's just a matter of, like, well, I know that this time of the year is always hard, so... I put in place like you know like I've got activities that I'm involved in you know you know going out for dinner with my girlfriends having Keep yourself girlfriend. busy Keep I need to yeah. be busy if I'm not busy then I have stagnant time and it's like ah you can hear it all going and it but you know you do need to take that time out to go I'm just gonna have me time and I guess yeah that's like I having that self-recognition that those triggers if you can if you're lucky enough to understand you know, oh, that's going to trigger me off, or 
that's going to trigger me off. You know, you can try and you know prepare. You can't always prepare, but you can mm. you can go. Oh, well, I know that I'm going to be in a situation that you know I could possibly you know feel a trigger coming on. So what am I going to do for myself so that if I, if it does happen, that I've got you know that life raft to be going like oh shoot out mm. things. Do you know and what I mean? Speaking of the life raft, yes. So you've um, sat here. You've had that little bit of a think to yourself about what you're going to do mm -hmm. and you've come to the conclusion that, you know, you don't want to be on this earth anymore. Yep. And thinking about, so you've got the kids tucked up in bed. Yep. I was just going to give them a kiss and get in my car and go. And drive into a tree. Yep. So that's what you planned. Yep. I've told my friends, if you hear that I've been in a car accident and I ran into a tree, that you know what I've done. So you told your friends that? Yeah. So did they not come to you straight away? Of course. Away? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. And stop the whole thing from yeah, happening? Yeah, like, you know, like, I, I, I think if you're ha lucky enough to have, you know, just those tiny close people that you, you can, you can be who you are mm. and let them know, it makes it a lot easier and they can, like, I've got the bestest friends in the world and... You know, if I picked up the phone at any given hour and called them and said, I need you, they'd be here. But I'm the same for them as well, yes. do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, that happened and um, I just kept thinking about those little anchors and they need me as much as I need them. So true, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and um, I was just about to come inside and I saw a falling star. And I wished on it, and I just, I didn't ask, I didn't ask for all, all the problems to go away with the money. I just asked for, a, I wish for a solution. Mm -hmm. I wish that I could find a solution, because I don't want somebody to make it all better for me. I just, mm -hmm. I want to find a solution. Yeah, so. Uh, so then, you went to work the next day? I did. My washing machine had blown up the night oh, before, wow. so there, there's a trigger. It was yeah. like, so, you know, it, it, I didn't know that that was going to be a trigger for me, but here I am, two kids, money is non-existent, it's gone, and I now don't have a washing machine because it's just sparked, like, flu sparks, because that, that was a trigger. I didn't know that it was a trigger, mm. and it became a trigger, and... I went to my boss at the time, one of the directors of the business, and I just I wanted to talk to him about um, the options of bankruptcy and what that would mean for me, you know, because I thought, well, that's a solution. Like, it, it's not the greatest solution, it's a very severe solution, but that could give me a fighting chance to get back in the black and, you know... It, so you went to your boss and asked... I just asked for yeah. advice on, yeah. you know, like, what, like, because he's been in business forever in a day and just wanted to ask him what his thoughts were and you know how do you go about it and um yeah and he asked me to bring everything to the table because he he gave a shit and he wanted to know like why I thought that bankruptcy was an option for me and my family and I, I, I did and he's he's like a he cares about you and so I spoke to him about everything and I told him, oh, and last night my washing machine blew up. And he's like, are you kidding? I'm like, no, this is my life. And um, so he's like, okay, well, leave this with me. I want to think about, you know, what you've talked to me about. So you've taken everything in there. So yeah, so, yeah, because, so, like, I was like, well, this is my incoming. You know what I'm earning. Yeah. You, you're paying me. Um, this is This is my... This is what's my outgoings, and as you can see, my outgoings are more than my incomings. Mm. And, um, yeah, so about 20 minutes after I had this conversation with him, I got a text message, and it was from Appliances Online, and I looked at it, and I'm like... So how long was this after you've spoken to him? 20 minutes. Right, okay, 20 so 20 minutes. minutes after that conversation that you've had with him, yep. and you've told him all about how... Um, you're looking at bankruptcy, yeah. you're looking at your finances and things just aren't happening. Yeah. So you presented everything to him, 20 minutes after you get a text message. Yes, from appliances online saying that my new appliance will be arriving tomorrow between 6am and 10am. So what was your reaction to that? I just went up to him and said, what have you done? So you you knew that it was him or well, seemed stupid me, well, I'd probably I had, look at I it had, and go, oh, 
I didn't order that. <laughs> well, he bought um, appliances for the work kitchen through appliances online and oh, being in so the office, you know, yeah. that that's a, a source that he works with. And I hadn't told anyone that I needed a washing machine. Good plug for appliances online, <laughs> by the way. And he's like, come with me. And we went in with my floor manager and we sat in the boardroom and he sat across from me and he said, you're fucked, aren't you? <laughs> Sorry, you need censorship. And I was like, uh, yeah, thanks. And he's like, all right, well, this is what we're going to do. And I sat there, and it was, you had a very out of body experience. I, I, I'm never lost for words, and I was struggling for words. Wow, that is amazing for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he's like, well, this is what we're going to do for you. You've got two kids, you're working your ass off, and it's not working for you. You got yourself into some shit. And I'm like, yeah, okay, when are you going to, like, like, okay, I know all of this. Like, mm. you're not telling me anything new, but thanks. And, um, what he said was, we're going to take you off your current salary and commission structure. And I was like, right. And he inflated my wage to an extra $20,000 a year. Now, hang on a minute. Stop right there. Okay. So, did everyone hear that? So, he has ceased your current... Um, Pay structure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I no longer earn my base and I no longer earn commissions. Right, but and he, he's changed it around yes. so that you're earning an extra $20,000 a year. Correct, yes. And in return, I didn't take my bonuses and I worked every second Saturday when I didn't have my kids. Wow. Yeah. Like, wow, that is insane. And what like, a wonderful man. He's a beautiful human. He's my favourite human in the whole wide world. That is amazing that someone would actually do that. Like, and that's I, I heard him that said, the one word that I did get out was, why are you doing this? Nobody does this. This is not... What he's, was his answer? He said, I wouldn't do it for anyone. You're a great salesperson. You're valued on my team. And I need you to be at your best game. And if this means that this is what we do, then we do that because... You're an investment to my company, and no, oh, I'm wow. like, yeah, it was. I, he just he believed in me, and at the point where I didn't even believe in myself, and that was huge. And um, I worked my ass off, and he had um, set me like a minimum, you know, KPI. Uh, KPI yeah. yeah, and I slogged my ass off, and I beat that KPI every single month because. I had something to prove to him that I was that good investment that he originally mm. saw. And, and over time, I started to see my value and my worth. He gave that back to me. He doesn't think he did. He, he doesn't even think that he did anything. Um, but yeah, I worked my, my butt off to make him proud. And in turn, I built, built my self-confidence up and made me want to do better for me and my kids. Not just do the mouse and the wheel sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. So do you still work for him today? Well, he he decided that the business, he'd outgrown the business and he left to start off. Uh, oh, that would have been devastating. I felt like my family had been oh, going through a divorce dear. because I just had so much love and admiration for this man and he was leaving me. <laughs> <laughs> he was leaving us. But um, I stayed on with the company and, you know, several months down the track, um, our company wasn't doing too, too well. And I found myself on the end of a redundancy. Oh, no. That would have been really... Oh, I can't even imagine. But you know what? Like, that would have been a massive trigger, you know, mm. say eight, nine months prior. Mm. But I found that confidence. He sparked that confidence and that self-worth in me to know that I'm not going to be jobless for very long. And I know that I'm not because... I am the most employable person he told me that he's known. And, because I rang him. Like, I maintained contact with mm. him after he left. And, you know, I rang him devastated because I'd given everything to this job. And I loved it. And I was so good at my job. And, you know, I was one of the top sales people in that team. I was helping train new stuff and everything. And, um, and he said to me, he goes, Amy, you'll find a job. I said, he goes, you're the most employable person person I know so don't stress and you know that was just that you know that extra little bit of yep yeah leaving you with that little bit yeah. of positive yeah yeah so um there was some struggles with my redundancy it didn't go smoothly anyway 
about a week and a half later, I got a phone call from him. And um, he's like, how you doing? I was like, yeah, you know, not too bad. With my redundancy, I bought a new car and I'm taking my kids on a holiday. You know, I want, that was on my dream for this year to take them to Queensland. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but you know what? I found a way because, you know, life had presented a redundancy. I didn't think it at the time, but you know what? Um, within an hour of me mourning for my job, I got smart and got savvy and started applying for jobs and stuff. He's like, well, that's what, he goes, have you got a job yet? I said, no, not yet, but mum will come. And he said, well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Can you come into my office? I was like, yeah, I'm in town anyway. I'm having lunch with a friend. I'll pop in afterwards. And um, I just thought we were just catching up. You know, he might have had a lead for me because, um, you know, he's connected in the business world. And um, I went into his office with his new team and half of them I used to work with. So it was like, you know, we'd, um, it was nice to see everybody again. And because he told me when I rang him, he goes, if I had a job for you, Ames, I'd give it to you. But at the moment, I don't. And I said, I'm not. I'm not calling you for a job, I'm just calling you because this is shitty things happened and I wanted to, you know, let you know that if you know anyone that's looking for someone for work, you know what I can do. You can, you know, give me what well, give me a lead. And um he um invited me in and he said, Well one of the guys wants to go back to his old job so I've got a job for you. When can you yes. start? Yes. Yeah. Oh so, yes. So not once but twice. He's, that is he's awesome. believed in me. And um, I've been there ever since and I'm smashing it and I love getting up and going to work and I'm tired but it's an amazing work environment. You know, we work and hard. And you value. I'm, I feel so valued but you know what, most of all, like, I value me so much more because I've done so much growing in the last, you know, two years and without that one person just believing in me and showing me that you're worth it. You're so worth it. I don't know if I'd be here. Do you know what I mean? Like, and he, to this day, I say to him, you're my favourite human. And he, he does it. He goes, you make me feel uncomfortable when you say that, Amy. And I was just like, but you've got to understand that, you know, for, for you, what you did was nothing. It was, mm. just, it was just a no-brainer. But for me, it changed my whole world. And that happens a lot in, you know, and I mean, and thank you to our wonderful mystery man. Um, because, you know, like... We can't really name names, we don't really want to do that, but you're watching tonight and you know who you are. And thank you for believing in Amy. Like, seriously, it's just a, a really wonderful thing that you've done. And um, I guess, you know, each and every night when I do these interviews, yep. I ask everyone to just have a little look down at the camera there, and meaning you, Amy, oh, me. looking down at that camera, and... You know, like, leave a little message for someone. There might be someone watching tonight and maybe they have reached that really low point in their life too and they don't know. what. Maybe they haven't got a boss like you had, you know what I mean? And maybe this is something that you can leave them with. So do you want to just leave them with a little message, a heartfelt message from you to them? Just know that you're worth it. To somebody, you might be the whole world and if you can find that one little piece of yourself to hold on to do it and one day you might be able to be the person that you know is that life raft for somebody else you know pay it forward be kind to yourself that's beautiful so yes be kind to yourself and for those out there like you know we're all in well I'm in small business and I know what it's like to have people work for you and I also know how important it is to actually you know rejoice in the fact that you have wonderful people working for you so how about, like I said earlier, how about just go and do something nice for everyone that works for you tomorrow. Just do a little something really lovely, you know, and um, keep up with this, the good spirit there and share it, you know. So each and every week we have all my beautiful viewers out there constantly supporting what we do. And I love you and thank you so much for it. So Alana, thank you Alana, Georgina Harry, Andrew Osborne. Anne Egan Plasia, Margaret Moffat, Leanne Swift, Tina Perry, hi, how are you going? Vicki Taylor, thank you. Anne Collichew, thank you. Gemma Baker, thank you, Gemma, all the way from Melbourne. Um, Malia Sophia, Gabrielle Bailey, thank you, Gabrielle. Like, Gabrielle went on a journey with me once before with a 
an organisation that we started doing beautiful things for people. So stay tuned, everyone, because there'll be some great stuff um, further on down the track that I need to tell you about. But thank you, Gabrielle Bailey. Thank you, Shireen Nicole Britton and Jay Rapici. Thank you, Jay. Shireen Lowe, thank you. Sheena Briggs, thank you, my darling. Vicky Jane Streetville, thank you so much. So, you know, in the future we're going to be lots of good, doing lots of good things with On The Couch. We've developed into another stage of the whole program, which um, I'll be able to tell you in the new year a little bit about that. So, for now, I'm going to keep it under wraps, but it's something quite sensational, believe me. So, thank you everyone for joining me tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I'll see you next week. 7.30 Wednesday nights live on Facebook. If you need to share any of these shows with anyone out there, just ask them to go to onthecouchwithkelly.com. You'll be able to see all the interviews there and read a little bit about me. So, I don't know whether that's a good thing or not, but anyway, thanks everyone. I really appreciate your support. And bye for now. And know that you're going to be okay. So don't give up. Do not give up. Know you're going to be okay. Bye for now.